say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're the farmers. Whose kitchen is this? This is our kitchen. This is our kitchen. You know what? We are actually cooking dinner. That's what we do. When you see us cooking in our kitchen, it's not a set. We're actually cooking dinner. That's right. She's always... Starving. So I have to get this show on the road yes, and feed do. her because she will perish if we don't. I'm, we yes, can't have I'm that. close. So it is, according to Nikki, mm -hmm. the holiday season. That's right. Yes, it is. Because shortly after Halloween... It's Christmas. It's time to decorate. Our whole family decorates. Every and kid, every child. If this makes you happy. It makes me very happy. You know it makes me happy. That's right. So, you know, when you think about it, if you did it right after Thanksgiving, you'd have one month. Right. That's, That's not, not enough Christmas. No. Because we need a little Christmas. That's right. I need a couple months. I need a couple <laughs> months of Christmas. Sing. I'll spare you that. But you know what? It feels like the holiday season. The deer are chasing each other. It's cold yes. outside. Yes. And so we got to start thinking about fall and some dishes, mm -hmm. some soups, some rices, some carbs. Yes. And a duck. Now, this is a duck recipe. If you've never had smoked duck, you're missing out. If you don't want to make duck, you can make chicken mm -hmm. with this very recipe. And it will be just as tasty. Right. But there's magic, yes, is there not? there is. And you know what? They're in the stores right now. You can find them. They are in the stores. And they're ducks. more expensive than right. a chicken. But it's so good. But if you've never tried it. Now, this is a dense, it's a tougher meat. It's a darker meat. Mm -hmm. But when you smoke one, mm -hmm. how can you describe it? It's just delicious. It's like a, it's sweeter than chicken. How would you describe it? It's richer. Yes. And if the fat gets cooked just oh, right. Yeah. Oh, you're talking something special. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you a brine. This is a little different from some of the brines that we do, but the basic part of a brine that you want is the sugar and the salt. So that right. really takes on that salt mm -hmm. and that sugar. And then when you cook it, that salt keeps that moisture in. Oh, yeah. And Delish. it's magic. So we're going to go two cups of kosher salt and two cups of brown sugar. And you got our burner going. Got the burner going. Now that is in three quarts of water. That's the start of the base, is three quarts of water. We're just gonna dissolve everything in there. Then we're gonna back off, and we're gonna actually put some cooler things in here, some beer and some ice to cool that down, because I don't wanna cook that duck in right. here before it even gets started. So if you wanna go ahead while you're mixing that and put a little bit of soy in there, right. you can go two or three tablespoons of soy. That gives it that dark, nice look and taste. And something else we're gonna do, is we're gonna go ahead and take, oh, I don't know, two or three tablespoons of peppercorns and put in there. And we're gonna take, I'd say four bay leaves here. We want that flavor in there as well. And again, we're not gonna bring this to a raging boil. We're just gonna get the salt and the sugar dissolved. And we're gonna take an orange or two. We're gonna take the zest off of these oranges. Now I like to, it's just me, but I like to use organic oranges, especially when I'm using the zest because they haven't been sprayed with anything. And so we're gonna take the zest off a couple of oranges and use the juice of the oranges because when you yeah. have, what happens, Nikki, when you got orange flavor and duck together? Delish. I mean, you, you just, you just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just so magic. Yeah, it you is just really have good. to try it if you haven't tried it. Oranges go with duck. They do. You gotta have them. We're also gonna put two 12 ounce beers in here and if you have a ginger beer that really works well and this time of year we'll make a duck and then we'll make another duck and then because there's not that much meat on it if you're gonna cook a duck a pretty good sized duck it's two people wouldn't you say that's right yes i got my little old-fashioned i like the old-fashioned juicers it's a beautiful thing yes it is remember your mom making orange juice with that i do delicious 
Ta-da! That smells heavenly. Like, how about some ginger? Can we put a little Let's ginger? Let's just put a little bit of ginger in there. Right. I think that's perfect. Yeah. So now I have taken this duck and I've taken this end of its wing off. And I'm using hickory on this one. You can use apple as well. I like that. We're going to tie this tail up. We're going to put the legs behind it like this and these in by its side. But for now, he's going to go take a 24 hour bath. And that piece of meat right there, that piece of meat hanging right there, when that comes off and it's crispy and smoky, mm. that might be the best piece on the duck. So we're going to make sure that duck is submerged. And in about 12 hours, we're going to turn that over to make sure he really gets a good soak. And that's where we start. So now through magic, this has set for 24 hours. Yes, it has. And we're going to put it in the smoker at 225 degrees. Mm -hmm. And we're going to let it go for about five to six hours mm -hmm. until it's golden brown and that leg bone starts right. to slip and you know that it's done. Yummy. It's a beautiful thing. So according to the government, ducks aren't as dirty as chickens and they have a lower <laughs> temperature. The thing about this is, with this recipe though, you know, you can do duck at 140, 135, 140. Chicken is recommended about 165. But our duck is gonna be nice and moist because the salt makes it retain that moisture. So you can get that temperature up a little bit. When it comes out, oh, well, we're gonna show you in a minute what it looks like when it comes out. All right, so what happens when we start cooking ducks? You think of all kinds of sides. <laughs> all kinds of sides. What are you gonna have with this? Well. Here's what happened the other day. You were out and about and said, I think I found a puffball. Very excited when I found that. This is a puffball. Mm -hmm. Before it starts its decline and mm -hmm. turns green and brown right. and the spores, you want it to be firm. This is nice and firm. We actually brought this in and put it in the refrigerator. Yeah. It's been there for what, two days? It, yes, it keeps it nice. So it is a bit dirty on, on the outside. We have washed it off a bit, but we're gonna go for what's inside. This soup that I'm making is just a nice, when there's a chill in the air and you mm -hmm. need just a little bit of heat, it's kind of a hot and sour type soup, but it's for mushrooms mm -hmm. and we got mushrooms. But these have the best smell and the best taste. So we're gonna cut these up in little pieces. A lot of times when you do a hot and sour-ish recipe, right. you'll put tofu. This sounds better. This is gonna be our tofu. Yummy. So if you can cut that up into some tofu sized squares, and yes, that is dirt on that mushroom because that's where they grow. So look at that. When you see that that's white all the way through, you know you're safe. Now here's the deal with mushrooms. Even if you send me a private message and say, Tim, please identify this mushroom for me. I will not do that. And it's not because I'm being mean. It's because you are responsible for your choices that you make out there. I can't be responsible for that. I know what my mushrooms are and I would not endanger my family by putting something in their stomachs that would hurt them. So you have to be as diligent out there know your mushrooms, talk to the old timers, key them out, talk to people who know what they're doing, and you'll be just fine. But this is yeah. what you wanna see, ready to eat puffball mushroom. Beautiful. Now, these things can get huge. Here's a picture of me standing in the field with a huge puffball I found out too long ago, and they get bigger than this, believe it or not. So we're gonna go ahead and start this recipe. It begins with a base of chicken broth. We're gonna take about six cups of chicken broth, Good start. That I like good it. Start good, start. About good start. You know, how, how many of our recipes start with, either with onions or chicken broth? Yeah, everything. A lot of them. Mrs. Farmer, if you would grate me up just a little bit of ginger in here. Okay. Probably half a teaspoon. Meanwhile, I'm going to take some little pieces of bamboo shoots. You know, Nikki does the most complicated thing, which is baking. And she doesn't mess it up. I don't know how she does it. I don't bake. I'm not a big baker because I don't have to. She let me do it. I I'll like let her sweets. do it. But let me tell you what, the more you do it, and the more you experiment, the more you have fun, the more you see what goes with what, you start developing your own taste and you become your own best friend in the That's kitchen. Right. That's and right. then what happens? It's hard to go out and eat. That's true. It when really you is. when you can't find anything as good as what you can make. So what we're gonna do now, let's go ahead and Nikki's gonna be watching me when I'm doing don't this. Don't do too many. <laughs> now this Lightly. recipe, I would say I would use Two on, pepper flakes. Depends on how hot you want it. That's but hot because enough. of you. Thank you. I'm gonna go half a teaspoon. And something else that I think is important in any dish like this is 
some white pepper. I love white pepper. You can pour that okay, in. Okay, so I'll go I half a teaspoon pepper. of that. Some of that That's effect. Now, if you have any good hot and sour soup, you know it's a little sweet in it. Mm -hmm. And That's you know right. it's a little tart. That's right. So let's put some vinegar in there. That's just white vinegar. You can use rice vinegar. We're gonna use about a quarter of a cup of that. And I'm gonna put just a little brown sugar. That's probably what? Teaspoon chicken bouillon. Mm -hmm. You want it as salty as suits you. If there are limitations to what you're supposed to take in, pay heed. So here's a teaspoon and a half of sesame oil. You got it. That's have good stuff. That's oil. good stuff. And I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of soy. Yeah. If you don't want it as salty, you can use light. Now something we're gonna do once we get up and rolling here is we're gonna take some of this duck meat. I like a little protein for this type of soup. It just really serves itself well. And I'm gonna put just enough that you can get on your spoon there. Cut them up just enough. I think that duck has the right consistency for this soup. Oh, it's perfect. And Ms. Farmer loves this kind of cooking. I do. You need to cook faster. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's take some of those green onions. Okay. And let's cook those and let some just just on this part, just, the, just the whites of it. Little pieces? Uh-huh, up to the green. All right, so let's put some onions in there. This is something that comes around fairly quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and put our bamboo shoots in there. You can see how quick this is coming together. This is not a hard thing to do. And you'll find that rather quickly, you can have something really tasty in a short amount of time. And just keep tasting as you go along. That's a mighty handy little tool yeah, to have around really it. Yeah, it's really nice. That's probably good. Good. So we're gonna drop in our puff balls. So back to Nikki's baking. Hey. I'm gonna put just a little more white pepper in there. Um, she's one of these people who has been doing this and I would say almost perfected the baking skills. But. <laughs> what? Are well, you they gonna tell, tell your the, story? I thought you can tell the story Kelly just Go told. ahead, you tell it. I was making apple dumplings once and I didn't have my glasses on. That's okay. the reason I can't. And so I saw the sea and I didn't realize it was cumin and not, not cinnamon. So I put, they had a cumin taste, but they were still good, remember? We were eating them and you're like, these taste really different. So it was, just it like, was still good? Yeah, it was still good. Okay. Do you think it was good? It was delicious. All right, I ate it. But you know what? She is an amazing baker. Um, do you want to go ahead and cut some more mushrooms up? Do you just want slices? Yeah, do like thin, they, thin slices. Like this? Yep. All right. All right, so I'm going to bring that down to a slower simmer, and then we're going to finish this just like egg drop soup. Yummy. We're going to have some ribbons of egg through there. So if you want to pour that in there, I'll just mix it in. Slowly mix it in. And this is our appetizer because we're going to have some duck here shortly. So there you go. Yummy. That is beautiful. I'm very excited. You're going to love this. So there we have, just like that, some restaurant quality eating. Now, if you want to sweeten that up a little bit or if you want some more. That looks perfect to me. You ready? Yes. Wow, that's really good. Mm. You notice it's not over hot. It's duck mushroom soup, I like it. Oh my. That's really good. Oh my. You know what, the last little bit of egg really brought that to life. Mm -hmm. It needed that. Now, in the last little step, if you want to, to thicken this up, you can put just a little bit of slurry in here, cornstarch and water, and that'll make that thick. And there you have it. Let's get a bowl. Set that up and let it cool while we're waiting for our duck to finish up. Okay. All right, you want to give it a try? The I official do. taste test? I do. That mushroom is so pretty. Isn't it though? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna have a little bit of mushroom in mine. And it's so fun to find something out and about that you can use when you're foraging about the woods. Oh, that's better. This tastes like tofu. Oh, I mean, it's know, got the consistency. I know, I know. That's really good. This is, I could eat this all night, just sit and eat it. That is perfect. It's like, it's better than tofu. I would. Is that not cool? This is, gotta make so more. So look on this spoon right here. Oh yeah. So that is our puff ball. And so that with other mushrooms, we have kind of a mushroom hot and sour. Oh, it's good. And it is so good and it's so tasty. And it's just warm enough, it was me, 
I'd be breathing fire out my nose, but I did this for you. You know what? Because I'm not usually one to get hot and sour. You and Kelly do. I, this is you like good. Because it's not, it's got a little bite, but it's not like your normal hot and sour. It's good. Oh. Mm. Mm. Oh. So I'm going to leave this That's simmer delicious. in here. Delish. And we're going to make our next dish, and then we're going to pull the duck. I'm ready. But you know what? A lot of people have said recently, we love it when you show your animals. Mm -hmm. So it's been a while. It is. So I guess maybe we should take a look and see how everybody's doing. When we have duck, an abundance of duck, mm -hmm. there's a few sides that I like to do. I'd like to take some brown rice, have it cooked ahead of time. But here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take some mushrooms. I'm just gonna put those in and toss them around. Okay, I'm gonna take these mushrooms. I'm just gonna come up just a little bit with my ulu. Cause this is gonna be in our fried rice. Yummy. Let's just saute those just a little bit. Now, I'll Yummy. tell you what let's do. Let's go take our onions okay. and let's press some garlic and a little bit. How much, you got three of these? Let's do, yeah, let's do three small ones. Let's go ahead and press that in there. So a little garlic, a little onion, and a little ginger. Beautiful. I love that grater. I do too. Mom got me that. How much, keep going? Just a little bit more. That's that up. Beautiful. Wow, that smells good right there. <laughs> it smells Ooh. good already. Yeah. I mean, what else do you need? Wow. I could eat that. So now we're going to rather quickly take this out. Now this is going to have so much flavor just, oh, yeah. just with those onions. Yum. You don't need a whole lot of seasoning. We're going to come back with some soy too here in a minute and some vinegar. So a little more oil. And if you see us using oil, typically Typically, most likely, it's going to be olive oil, always. We're gonna come right back in by our ice. So we're gonna lightly turn this in that oil. We're gonna go ahead and add our peas. Yummy. These are frozen peas. I like peas. I mean, this is just so quick and easy. Oh yeah. You know, you can put, if you wanted to. Now let's get a little piece of butter. Butter? I like butter. We're going to spend about a minute and a half, two minutes turning this over, letting it get crispy. And again, this is brown rice. Look at that. Yummy. You smell that? I do. Then we're going to come with Ooh, some soy. soy. About a tablespoon and a half of soy. And we're going to come in with some rice vinegar oh, wow. and about a teaspoon and a half of rice vinegar. Then we're going to put our duck in Ooh, there. Yum. Now we're coming back with our mushrooms. Oh my goodness, yummy. Onions and garlic, look at that. Look at that. Now that looks amazing. So let's go ahead and pop an egg. And you could do two if you want. Another two? Just, Another? Just gonna fry that, yeah, may as well. We got a lot of chickens, might as well. We got a lot of chickens. So we've got two proteins in here. We've got our carbs, we're right. so ready to go. Oh, I can't wait. We got onion and garlic. All right, let's go ahead and put the rice back in here. Right. Mix that up. And look what we've got. Is that not beautiful? That is beautiful. That's the best looking fried rice I've ever seen. <laughs> you did good. <laughs> and it smells Ooh. so good. We got a lot too. I can eat it for a couple days. All right, let's pull that off the burner. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And, and we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brother.
Got a frog in my throat. You know, Tim Farmer was telling me that he got him some chickens and he go raise chickens, sell eggs, make a lot of money. Yeah. And well, he read in the magazine, farm magazine, where if he feed them silkworms, they'd lay better. Yeah. So uh, I, I seen him there and he, so it been about six months and I seen him up there. I said, Tim, how you chicken done? He said, I've been feeding them silkworms. I said, well, how they doing? He said, well, they're laying good, but all the eggs got pantyhose in them. Do the roof or something. All right, then. Had a hen, wouldn't lay no eggs. Had a hen, wouldn't lay no eggs. Then the rooster came on the farm, met the hen down by the farm. She laying eggs down. We got eggs now. Said Thurston. Came on the farm. She laying eggs now. We got eggs now. Said Thurston. Came on the farm. Had a dog. Didn't have no pup. Had a dog. Didn't have no pup. Then the rooster. She's having bird dogs. We got bird dogs. Say Thursday came on the farm. She's having bird dogs. We got bird dogs. Say Thursday came on the farm. Had a cow, didn't give no milk. Had a cow, didn't give no milk. Then the rooster came on the farm, caught the cow down by the pond. She gave an eggnog, we got eggnog. Then the rooster came on the farm, she gave an eggnog, we got eggnog. Then the rooster came on the farm. Didn't have no kids. Uh -oh. Had a name. Didn't have no kids. And then the rooster came on the farm. Caught a rank out behind the barn. Red fried rooster. Red fried rooster. Said the rooster came on the farm. The head fried rooster. The head fried rooster. Said the rooster. Look at our beautiful duck, sitting right here ready to go. You tried the fried rice, I didn't. I've been sneaking it, it's so good. That's delicious. Wow. Mm. Mm. That's so good. It's really good. Can I try some duck? Well, of course you can, Mr. Park. Oh my goodness, look at this. Oh wow. Mm. Oh, oh. You know what? It's like a mix of a chicken and a like really good steak. I mean, how do you describe in between? It's like so delicious. It's hard to describe. It's just so sweet and delicious. So here's our little present to you. We hope you like it. Tragically, our half hour has escaped. That's right. So when that happens, I usually say, Mrs. Farmer. Mm -hmm. If you were at a football game in Michigan. Uh, every Friday. That's right. And somebody said, Mrs. Farmer, I saw you show up mm -hmm. here. How would you fix that? You'd tell them. Go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. And then if they said, well, we'd like to chat with you guys and share recipes, and you'd say... Hit like. On our Facebook That's page. That's right. You know what? The holidays are upon us. You might be seeing some holiday stuff as we move on down the pike. But sadly, again, our half hour is up, so we'll have to say it's all about... Good times. Good friends. And really good eats. We'll see you next week. Oh, my week. goodness.
We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this That's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Emerson Farms Country Store. Something for every member of the family. Ephraim McDowell Medical Center in Danville, Kentucky. Gulf Coast Connection. Seafood straight from the Gulf to you. The Spine Center of Central Kentucky. Wilderness Road Hospitality, Stanford, Kentucky. Visit Frankfurt, Kentucky Spirited Capital City.